If you're watching this, it is August 15th or later, and that means the BDG3 NFT pass is officially live for minting. Some of y'all signed up for it about a month ago, probably forgot about it. So immediately, if you want to get your hands on one of the BDG3 passes because they are minting this week and only this week you have to hop in the bdg3 discord and we will push you along and show you how to get your hands on it first and foremost that is very very important this is going to be an incredible product experience and event for y'all all right if you have no idea what the fuck i'm talking about we'll have more information linked in the description about what the bdg3 pass is that being said this is a continuation video of what we talked about on Saturday. I ripped through Thursday and Friday's preseason games of week one and gave you my biggest takeaways from them. Today, we are ripping through the Saturday games and there are eight players that based on Saturday's performances, your idiot league mates will be overlooking in fantasy football this year. They have skyrocketed up my rankings because of their performance, because of the run that they got with the first team in the first week of the preseason. I know you guys are going to say I'm dramatic. I'm not fucking dramatic. A little bit dramatic, but I promise I'm steering you down the right path. So we're going to look at eight players that your idiot league mates are going to overlook because they're not paying attention right now when they should be. All right. You know what to do. Tuck your shirt in. Flexi traps. Stop yelling. <laughs> The first dude up on this list is the Kansas City Chiefs running back Isaiah Pacheco out of Rutgers, beautiful New Jersey. Now, this dude was a seventh round rookie pick for them this year. Like a fucking ambulance in New York City has done nothing but make noise all summer at their camp. And then guess what? They put their money where their mouth was. In the first preseason game, it was all Clyde Edwards Hilaire on the first drive until it wasn't. All right. Patrick Mahomes is on the field for about 11 snaps. It was Clyde for seven of them, but really invaluable, non valuable plays between the 20s carries. As soon as they got down to the red zone, Isaiah Pacheco came on. He got a carry immediately with Mahomes. He got a target inside the 10 yard line. Pacheco's the two there. Pacheco is the running back two in Kansas City right now. And he should be drafted ahead of Ronald Jones. You know, that was a mistake by me, but we have plenty of time to correct that. He should be ha drafted ahead of Jarek McKinnon. He should be drafted ahead of everybody else in that backfield outside of Clyde Ward Tiller right now. This backfield is open for the taking, and Isaiah Pacheco has just as good of a chance as anyone to take it right now. He's going to go under the radar. Most of your league mates are not going to know about this kid, but he looked great in their first preseason game. He immediately got runs with the starters, man. That is legit. Isaiah Pacheco might be here to stay. He's a bigger back. He's explosive. He runs like Chris Carson. We had a whole write-up about him in our rookie draft guide. Um, and I love this kid on film. So I'm excited for him to get a chance. And you should be excited to get your hands on him. Uh, next dude up on this list. And everyone, if you followed me for any amount of time, will know that Khalil Herbert is my fucking guy. David Montgomery did not play in their preseason opener. Justin Fields did. He was on the field for a while. And Khalil Herbert took literally every single snap that Justin Fields was on the field for. 18 snaps for the starting quarterback, 18 snaps for Khalil Herbert. He looked good on the ground. Again, this O-line is going to stink, and he still has to carve out a big role behind David Montgomery, which he clearly has. He's the workhorse if Montgomery's not there. And admittedly, he's not a great pass catcher. It's definitely not a strong suit. It was never his strong suit in college. He literally played five years in university and never surpassed 10 receptions in a year. So he's not going to be the pass catcher there, but he's a very good early down guy and they just showed that all of their confidence goes to Herbert if Montgomery is not on the field I think he's a guy who's going to carve out a role splitting the carries there man I think Herbert's got real upside this year we've got a couple more rookies that we should uh that we should get into and this is the Brian Robinson experiment right coming out of Alabama I wasn't too high on Robinson as like a talent as an athlete Ron Rivera in Washington went out and drafted this kid in the third round. You know why? Because he's dependable. This is something I've literally been saying to you guys for four months now. Gibson, Antonio Gibson has been the easiest fade of the offseason, and now he should literally be going outside of the first eight or nine rounds of drafts. This was the worst case scenario for this guy. You bring in Robinson because he's really dependable. He's not going to fumble. He's not going to make mistakes, and he's going to do what you asked him to do. Antonio Gibson is like the opposite of that. He had fumble problems last year. He had a lot of fumble problems. He fumbled six times last year. What did he do? The second carry of the game in week one of preseason 
He fumbles. He gets benched immediately. Brian Robinson comes in and plays the rest of the time with the starters. He comes in, carries the ball six times. He gets the goal line score, which was already going to be a problem for Gibson. He catches a couple passes. J.D. McKissick was in on the field for some of the third, the third and long. Here's the thing. This is going to be a committee in Washington. The question now becomes, who's the 1A? Who's the 1B? I'm not going to be surprised if Brian Robinson jumps Antonio Gibson as the starter in Washington. I know you guys are going to say it's dramatic, but if you go watch the preseason game, this dude had fumbling issues, immediately fumbled, got benched. He came back into the preseason game with the backups, Antonio Gibson did. So Brian Robinson has a very good chance to make a, an immediate impact for Washington as a rookie, as the goal line back. I'm a little bit excited for him. He's a guy who caught over 30 passes last year for Alabama. He's a guy who can contribute on all three downs. Uh, it will be McKissick, McKissick's job on third and long in pass catching situations, but we saw Gibson have a sizable role last year as the early down guy. I still think it's going to be a messy committee, but Brian Robinson needs to be on the radar of late round draft picks. And staying in Washington, Jahan Dotson is a guy that if you go Back to my my first rookie draft of the offseason. It was early. It was way before the uh, the actual NFL draft. I had Jahan Dotson, I think it's like the 107 or something like that. Like really, really early relative to where other people were drafting him. I thought he was like T.Y. Hilton. I thought he was a second coming. Really, really crispy route runner. Gets picked 16th overall this year to Washington. He's going to be the secondary piece to Terry McLaurin, but there's not a lot of other playmakers in this Washington offense from a pass catching standpoint outside the hashes over the middle. Jahan Dotson played on 11 of 11 Carson Wentz snaps, which pretty much puts him in line to be the wide receiver too in this offense. Everything about the preseason hype so far has been really, really positive for Dotson. Not a guy I'm like overly hyped about, but he's a guy that's going to be on the field all the time. And I could see him having a really, really strong second half of the year as he continues to you know, become a better route runner. He's already really, really good as a route runner. But as Wentz gets more and more comfortable with him being on the field, he could play a very, very nice, strong secondary piece to Terry McLaurin in this offense. I just thought he was worth mentioning because he was on the field for every single snap with Wentz. As with Naeem Hines, with Matt Ryan. Matt Ryan played for a long fucking time on Indianapolis's first preseason game. Naeem Hines was basically in on every single snap. Ran like 11 or 12 routes, carried the ball nine times. Obviously, Jonathan Taylor was sitting. Jonathan Taylor is going to be a major, major you know, player for top touch total in the entire NFL. I don't care about all this nonsense about them not wanting to give him the ball and they're not going to carry it. Like, listen, Jonathan Taylor, one-on-one no matter what. But I'm getting more and more open to the, the thought of Naeem Hines being a guy that I kind of want to draft in like half PPR and PPR leagues. I do think that they're going to go more pass heavy. I do think these guys in the in the same vein that I think AJ Dillon and Aaron Jones are going to play a lot together. I think we could see a similar setup with Naeem Hines and Jonathan Taylor. OK, so Naeem Hines is a guy who I've never wanted to draft before, but I think he's going to be way more involved this year than he has in previous years. And they just showed that if something happens, to Jonathan Taylor, Naeem Hines becomes a workhorse because they got nothing else behind him. Isaiah McKenzie is another winner from this preseason, and he didn't even play. That is the reason he's the winner. They rested all of their starters. He's been battling Jameson Crowder for the starting slot receiver in Buffalo. They decided to rest him along with Gabe Davis and Stephon Diggs. They played Jamison Crowder when Josh Allen didn't play. What that tells you is my Isaiah McKenzie has locked up the starting slot receiver role over Jamison Crowder. Okay, Isaiah McKenzie, extremely explosive, was awesome last year when he got the limited uh, amount of playtime, put up some big fucking numbers. And we know this is a slot receiver role that has had big, big statistics come out of it. Cole Beasley last year, Emmanuel Sanders at times, where if Isaiah McKenzie gets the role, he... I, I, he's a guy that I'm I'm going to be trying to draft in most fantasy football leagues that I'm in this year. He's an under the radar guy that your idiot league mates, if they're not paying attention to football right now, are not going to know anything about. He's a guy you could probably get in the 14th, 15th, 16th round of normal friends and family drafts. And I think his PPR upside is very, very, very fucking high. So excited about Isaiah McKenzie for the fact that he rested with the starters while everybody else secondary third string played. Seems like he's got that role locked up. George Pickens, bro. Holy sheesh. George Pickens looked like the most pro-ready wide receiver throughout any preseason game that played this weekend. Caught an absolutely beautiful fucking seed from Mason Rudolph in the corner of the end zone. The fucking toe tap. Antonio Brown would have been proud of the toe tap that George Pickens fucking pulled in on this 33-yard touchdown cast uh, catch. Pickens looks every bit as advertised. The hype this offseason has been incredible around Pickens. At, at this point, look, Claypool didn't play. Deontay Johnson didn't play. We were, we were seeing Trubisky and Rudolph and Pickett all cycle through, and they all look pretty good in their own right, to be honest with you. Don't know who's going to be the starting quarterback for the majority of the year, but Pickens looks ripe to fucking take that wide receiver two role sooner rather than later. I don't know when it's going to be. He's the clear wide receiver three right now. 
I think, I mean, he's he already looks like the guy that we wanted Claypool to be after his rookie year. Pickens looked so fucking pro-ready on Saturday. I am really excited to see this kid develop. He was a guy that, admittedly, I was thinking of as like a Mike Williams type, as a you know a long yardage specialist, even like a Claypool type, where he can be a thousand yard receiver. A lot of his production is going to be you know boomer bust type production games. But I got to change my fucking tune on him after after Saturday. So he's a guy that I will be targeting. I'm probably not going to uh, leap up too early because this is not a passing offense that's going to have a ton of volume in it. There's also com- competition with Claypool, Deontay Johnson, Najee Harris, Pat Fryermuth, maybe Calvin Austin, like a lot of players. So it's really hard to see like a path to a really high upside, but he's a dude that will probably have some really big games throughout the year, and he's worth drafting now. He's worth being on the radar as like a ninth, 10th, 11th round pick in redraft leagues. And the last dude up on this list, you know, we had to give some love to the GOAT, Damian Pierce. If you've been following me since fucking January, you probably own Damian Pierce on all of your dynasty rosters and you better be fucking happy that you do because this dude balled out five carries 49 yards a light 10 yards per fucking carry this dude looked incredible admittedly Rex Burkhead did not play Damian Pierce did not get on the field with the ones but he was by far and away the best running back on the field on Saturday it's only a matter of time before he's a starting running back if you were on Twitter for any amount of seconds on Saturday you could feel the energy about Damian Pierce. So I will I will hold up a little bit until he starts getting runs with the ones. We need the runs with the ones, Pierce. He's going to be the starting quarterback, or the starting running back in Houston by week five. He's going to be a guy that will produce low-end RB2 numbers for you throughout the entire year that you're able to fucking draft that is an RB4. He looked incredible, and I cannot wait to see this dude take a lead role in this offense, and it's going to happen because he's the fucking GOAT. All right, those are eight players from this weekend that rised considerably after Saturday's games. Uh, We will be following all the preseason stuff throughout the offseason, so make sure that you're subscribed to the channel throughout the the actual week itself. We will, oh, we're hosting the Sleeper Bowl on Tuesday night. The Sleeper Bowl will be live on our YouTube channel. All right, we're we're in a league with AJ Dillon, Tyler Algier, uh, a lot of your favorite, you know, content creators and analysts, JJ Zacharyson and Peter Overzet, uh, Tuesday night. At 9 p.m. Eastern time, we'll be hosting it on our channel, and we're gonna have fucking AJ Dillon calling in. We're gonna be we're gonna be hanging out and talking with him throughout the draft. He's actually the defending champ, which is nuts. I don't know how fucking embarrassed these people are who were playing with him last year. Um, but whatever level it is, they need to be a little bit higher than that because that's honestly pathetic. Won't let it happen this year. Uh, so we're hoping the Super Bowl. We're hosting the Super Bowl Tuesday night again. If you want in on the BDG three pass. Make sure you go join the Discord and we will hold your hand through the process of it all. So if you enjoy the video, make sure you hit the thumbs up, subscribe to the channel if you're new, and I'll see y'all tomorrow.